All right. Um, so just in case anybody watches this after the fact or um, joins me, so this might be short um, uh, because I kind of went over the um, assignment last time. So um, I'll probably stick around here today, although maybe turn off the recording, see if some other people show up, need some help with the six assignment on the quick sort or anything. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know if, um, uh, how people are doing on understanding our kind of readings and stuff for the analysis of algorithms, but, uh, but yeah, your materials are, should be, um, from the, uh, kind of our supplemental textbook here, um, this free, uh, Schaffer textbook. Um, it's a little bit of a tough topic, so I hope everybody's understanding the, the, the lecture video is okay this week. Um, yeah, and, and um, you know, the, the quiz will be kind of important this week here, so you'll probably definitely get some similar questions like this on the midterm and maybe, maybe final as well about, um, you know, big O notation and um, um, the kind of the relative ordering of, of algorithms. So, you know, which is, uh, which is faster or slower, like an n squared versus a logarithmic and, um, you know, those kinds of things. So, so I hope, you know, my kind of goal for people on the course that they're taking this course is, um, that at least, you know, some of the basics, you know, so, so kind of what we mean by big O notation and why, uh, how, how you can measure it, at least in a general sense, so how you can spot like a um, an n squared, so an algorithm that's going to perform uh, as the square of the input size versus an al algorithm that's going to be linear in the input size, you know, so. Um, and kind of, you know, how to compare them, at least some of the basic ones, so like a polynomial, like n squared or n cubed. Um, or a linear or a constant time algorithm, that type of thing. So, uh, so maybe I'll just say one or two more things about the assignment six and then probably I'll pause the recording and then see if people come and uh, have some further questions about things for this week if they want to discuss anything. Uh, so we, we did discuss the assignment six um, on the Monday video as well. So you can also look at the Monday's help session if, if you're getting started on it or haven't or are still looking for some resources to work on the assignment six. Um, from the questions I've been getting from people so far, I think, I mean, from, from my experience, but most people, you know, the first two functions are not meant to be that difficult. So, so most people should be able to get the, the swap function and then the find and swap pivot, right? The definitely the, the, the tough one is the partition list. So this is a bit tricky. Um, um, there is an algorithm here. So one thing that some people, I mean, I've had a little bit of some confusion uh, about this is that, um, you know, there, there is, an implied outer loop here. So, so you have to have some nested loops, which is what makes the partition list a little bit tricky. Although there are maybe some other ways to do this, but, um, but uh, probably the most straightforward implementation is kind of a while loop on the outer loop and then maybe also a while loop or maybe some for loops on the inside. So the, these inner loops need to be, well, one of them needs to be incrementing. So you need to be going from the left and incrementing and stopping when you find, you know, the, the value. And it is important that you stop when it's greater than all, or, or equal. So this greater than or equal is, is a, um, you know, so, so you should notice that difference that uh, you'll, you'll run into a bug if you just do strict, strictly greater than uh, and strictly less than on both of these here, so. And then your other loop needs to decrement. So you need to have a loop that's counting down from the right 
um, and, and again is stopping um, at the right place. And then it's also a little bit tricky to make certain, um, I mean, you know, swapping those, if you found two candidates is not too tough, although, you know, make certain that you are reusing our swap function, uh, your swap function from this assignment. Um, but, um, but then, yeah, you just have to keep doing that. And, and, and again, another tricky thing is to make certain you correctly stop doing this big outer loop here when, um, um, oh, I meant, um, uh, one thing I noticed here is that, uh, I've actually got this wrong here. I need to fix this. So it should be, uh, you expect left to be less, less than right. So maybe I should post an announcement about this, although I don't think anybody's asked me about this. Um, and um, I, I must not have noticed this even from the last time when I used this assignment. So, so really this should be if, 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 uh, if when right is less than left, you expect the, the left to be less than right. Um, oh no, I'm sorry, oh, no, that's right. So yeah, if left is less than right, you wanna keep looping. Okay. So yeah, this is correct. So well, as long as left is less than right, you need to keep searching from the left for values and for the right for values. And if, um, so your, your loop condition though, you might be doing something like checking if uh, left is greater than or equal to right and breaking out, for example. Or you might be checking if left is, you know, doing like while left is less than right or something like that, so. Um, but yeah, that's right, okay, so. So that's, that's the right check though. So as long as left is less than right, you need to keep searching. So, uh, um, all right. And then, yeah, I mean, besides the um, kind of the algorithm for, although I've got them a little bit, uh, maybe I should um, rewrite this assignment description a little bit. Um, but, but yeah, there is kind of a, a bit of a description of the algorithm for the partition list, uh, but there's also a bit of a description for the quick sort as well. So that's your fourth or last function. Um, so like, maybe I should kind of flip these because you really should, you need to do the partition list first because you need to use partition list in your quick sort, so. Um, Okay. okay, and yeah, like I said, I think, I mean, I don't have much else I can think of to add for that if anybody's looking at this. So, you know, um, I'll probably stick around, see if other people show up on this help session, although I might stop recording here. Um, and, um, so for people joining, feel free if you have some questions, um, that you're looking to get answers for, for the assignments or anything, you know, let me know. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, I've kind of this help session and, and the previous one, I have talked a little bit about the assignment six. So at least how you get started and, um, some suggestions and things for the algorithm. So. Um, so, uh, a question about how would you move the pivot back? So, um, so, so yeah, this is for the, the quick sort, um, function, the last function. So, um, basically after you partition the list, um, it's going to return back the index where the pivot index uh, is. Um, so it'll, it'll return back the, the index K. 
Um, so that's, that's the actual index where the pivot value should go to. So, so really, I mean, um, uh, yeah, I mean, you should be calling, recalling, reusing your swap function um, and just swapping the, the right value with that value that's returned back from pivot list. So, um, um, so yeah, the, um, the partition list doesn't swap it back for you. So it leaves the, the value that it was using to partition the list in the right hand side. Uh, and after that, kind of the answer that you get back. So, you know, your partition list is supposed to be, as a side effect, it's supposed to have moved everything less than that pivot value to the left side and everything greater than or equal to that pivot value to the right hand side. Uh, that's kind of as a side effect, and, but, but then it will explicitly kind of tell you, it'll return, it should return back the index um, where those change. So, so that, that position in the list where it changes from being less than to being greater than or equal to the, um, the value it was using to partition the list with. So, so then, yeah, so, so the idea then is that if you actually swap the value you you were using to partition into that location k, you will have moved it to its correct place for the sort. And then you just have to sort the left side and the right side of that place. So, yeah. Uh, Okay, um, yeah, so I'm gonna hang around, but I'm gonna pause the video. Um, but if, if anybody asks questions, I can't start discussing things, I'll um, unpause, so.